Okay. And Melanie, um, as an extension of what you were just saying, um, how much would you say Sri Lanka has progressed and developed since independence 61 years ago? Um, well, we have, and uh, technology-wise, and uh, the country has evolved, definitely, um, becoming independent and establishing itself, itself as a, an independent country. We could have done more. We have a huge, amazing potential we can reach, and I know we hope that things will get better and it'll go on improve, but certain things like uh, democracy, which is kind of the main topic nowadays, uh, is lacking. So I think we need to concentrate on that and stand a lot of living and prices, everything, so. Okay, and Dinidu? How far we progressed? Um, to say that we haven't progressed at all would be a very, you know, yeah. anti uh, colonization kind of statement. So we actually have progressed. But the work is how much, ha the, the, the main question should be how much have we progressed? In that sense, the rate of progress which was there in 1948, which, which, you know, which, which our leaders still talk about saying, you know, Singaporeans looked at us, Indi Indians looked at us, the Japanese were proud of us. So the rate of progress we had in 1948 and where we could have gone if the same momentum was retained and where we are now, um, I think there's, there's a massive gap. And, and it's, it's been the leadership itself at different points, which for different, different reasons hasn't been able to capitalize on what Sri Lanka has to offer. But um, I think we've come somewhere, but we could have done much, much, much more if there was actual willing political leadership in this country. Okay, and Sachit, what do you think? Uh, I would ag agree with Dinidu and Melanie, but then I would add something more. That is, uh, during the past 60 odd years, have we, have we gained independence as individuals? Do we have freedom of, do we have the freedom to choose whatever we want? Say, for example, education. We have free education, but is it about freedom? Is it about learning what you want to learn? Is it about having the chance for people who work hard and to go up in life? So that's, 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 that's the sort of independence that we don't have. In a, as a whole of a country we have, but then as individuals say, maybe, maybe the uh, better of people, but then the poor people who are the average people of this country, do they have their independence? And in the next 61 years, or next 60 years or so, what are the other pressing issues that you think should be addressed? Uh, one issue is that, what I just mentioned, it is that giving more economic freedom to people. It's, I'm, 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 I'm personally, I'm in the idea that we, you shouldn't always give things free of charge to people. It's not about giving free health, free education. It's not, that's not something that we should work for. We should work for empowering people. And that is something which we need to think about in the next 60 odd years. Because pe it's people themselves need to be empowered. Uh, then the other issue is uh, the present ethnic conflict we have. How do we transform this conflict into a positive situation? That is something that we have to work on. Okay, and Melanie, what do you um, think? I would say um, that the that the urban areas, I mean, Colombo and et cetera, has developed a lot, but comparatively, rural areas are uh, not developed at all. I mean, they're far behind us. And even up north now, um, we have seen the condition in pictures, et cetera, and we feel that there's a lot to build up over there. I think in the next 60 years, we should go on to developing areas to come at least a little close to how Colombo is. And Dinidu, what are your thoughts? <clears throat> Sri Lanka in the next six years. Um, they say the government that governs best is the government that governs least. So in that sense, I would, for me, what I would like to see in six years, and I don't see this happening at all, is a system where people's individuals, individual rights and freedoms are respected. And government intervention into everything, be it, be it your political rights, be it your economic activities, be it your you know, civil activities, whatever, but the government's intervention towards these would be minimized. And people would be able to reach their full potential. That would what I would want to see to Sri Lanka, it happening to Sri Lanka in six years, but I'm very skeptical about it is actually happening. Okay, and finally, uh, this year Independence Day has been informally rechristened uh, National <coughs> Day. Now this new title has very different connotations from the original, especially given the present uh, political context. What are your thoughts, Dinidu? It's a very risky question to answer, and it's a very interesting question. Um, see, 
the, the, the beauty of it is, if I, if I can translate, the, the singular word for independence is Nidahasa, and the singular word for national is Jatika. When you have an Independence Day or a Nidahas Dine, it, it talks more, it talks beyond the, you know, the superficial value of fine, we were decolonized, because then we could have easily called the, the decolonization day. But the value I see in calling it Independence Day is it's for a day for people to save, celebrate independence, which we, are, which we won't be doing from now on if, I, if, if the current trend continues. And the risk I see, and which is my primary worry about the whole calling it the National Day, is it's concepts like you know, patriotism, national security, unity, integrity. Concepts like this, these have been raped and perverse to such an extent that they are used to justify a lot of wrongdoings in the country. And by taking the most, impo the most important day as Sri Lankans, which is the Independence Day, and retagging it, calling it the National Day, I see the, the for, for wrongdoers, I see that giving them a lot of leverage to do whatever they want and then get away with it, which the majority of the people, due to the popular school of mind, the school of thought, would actually justify. So, it's for me, it's worrying. Okay. And um, this doesn't just just to make a small clarification. This doesn't mean to me that you know we, we should be deunited. I think as as people of Sri Lanka, we should be very united. But unity doesn't mean sugar coating it in something which sounds nice, and getting away with stuff that you shouldn't get away with. Uh, something which Dinidu said about uniting the country. Uh, I think when you say I'm I'm not exactly sure why they call it the National Day. But I think what they're trying to do is trying to create a national identity, maybe. Trying to gather the single identity, the Tamil, Buddhist, Christian, all these identity together and create one. Is it the right way to unite this country? That's a problem. Uh, we have a constitution. Are we proud of it? Are we proud of our rights, which our ancestors fought for? The independence day is all about those rights, all about our independence as individuals. So do we talk about that? Shouldn't that be our focus? So, um, I'm, I don't know what exactly the National Day is, but then my point is that, about how we unite this country. Okay, that's about all we have time for at the moment. Thanks for your interesting observations, everyone. Stay with us for more on Independence Day. Mm -hmm.